Hey everyone, I'm Joey, and today I'm gonna to share with you what I was up to this week and how I earned $300 in one hour. Hit that like button if you wanna know how you can too. For the sake of helping me reach a wider audience, thank you for showing your support by smashing that like button. I had an event at a school in Atlanta that was for a medium arch. I offer a few sizes of balloon arch, and for my medium size, I use this frame from Chanvis that's only $25 on Amazon. I like this frame for a lot of reasons. It's durable, the flexible rod unfolds into smaller one-foot sections for easy transport and storage, the water bag weights are durable and hold enough water to sufficiently weigh this arch down, and the PVC pieces fit into the plastic bases snugly so they stay attached throughout the duration of the event. This frame is definitely reusable, but it's only $25, so if I have an event that's far away that I don't want to spend the time and gas to go pick up, I can leave it at that event for the event host to break down and throw away. I have a link to this arch frame in the description below the video if you're interested in checking it out. This is my favorite arch frame for quality and affordability, and I would not recommend it to you unless I I've tried it myself and believe in the product. Because this balloon arch is going to be outdoors, there are a few extra supplies and steps that I'll take to be confident in the structural integrity of this setup over the course of several hours. I'll talk about that later in the video. One step that I take is filling up the water bag weights before getting to the event site. I do this for indoor and outdoor events because it's way easier to fill them up in my sink or bathtub than it is to search around for a suitable water source at the event and it saves time during the setup. Learn from my mistakes. Don't take that chance. Just fill your water bags up at home. When I first get to my event, I set up the arch frame to stake my claim. This shows everyone around that this is where I'll be working. I attach the PVC to the plastic bases, place the water weights on top, and unfold the flexible rods, placing each end into the PVC pieces. I stick one side in first, then work my way hand over hand to the other side of the arch frame. This allows me to keep control of the arch frame while one end is still not connected so that it doesn't start swinging around, which could cause damage to people, items, or walls nearby. After I set up the frame, I walk around aimlessly for a few minutes. Just kidding, I'm looking for an electrical outlet. What's this guy doing? What's he looking at? Anyway, you never know what your worksite is going to look like, so it's best to come as prepared as possible. I brought an extension cord so I can work as close to the setup spot as possible with my electric balloon inflator. There's also a link to this in the description if you're looking for one of these. I found an electrical outlet at the base of a lamppost, but it might be just far enough away that my extension cord won't reach, so I keep looking around. I found one on the other side of the stage that I'm working next to. Oh, there's one on this side of the stage too, sweet. That's much closer than the lamppost. I check for electricity. Nice, we are in business. It's annoying when you find it an electrical outlet but the electricity isn't turned on. It's also tough when the nearest outlet is far away, which requires you and another person to carry the balloon arch after it's built to the setup spot. Lucky for me today, I have an outlet nearby and the electricity is flowing. Time to get started. Let's check my phone to see what time it is and how long it's going to take me to build this. I arrived right at noon and parked across this field. I've been working slow and made multiple trips to the car, so it's taken me 30 minutes so far to bring supplies to the build spot, set up the arch frame, set up my camera, unravel my extension cord and find an electrical outlet. If you end up doing an event like this, make sure to plan a little bit of extra time for figuring out the logistics of your build. Balloon arches are made of quads. Quads are four balloons attached to each other. I'll inflate two at a time of the same color, tie them together, then do the same thing for the other color. I'll twist the two pairs together a few times to create a quad. If you're wanting to know the fastest and easiest way to tie two balloons together, I also have a video for that in the description below. To connect the quads to the frame, just slide the frame between two balloons, then twist those two balloons around each other once, which secures that quad to the frame. Because I'm only using two colors for this arch, an easy way to keep track of your pattern is to line up the colors of your quad on opposite sides of the quad. I want the colors that are the same to actually be across from each other when it's on the arch frame. So by starting with the colors divided, I can slide the arch frame between two different colors, then swap the positions of those two balloons that are on the arch frame. This secures the quad to the frame and creates the pattern that I'm going for, which is similar colors across from each other. Every quad that you add is going to sit in the creases of the quad below it. The top quad will not be placed directly in line with the quad below it. It will be 45 degrees offset. This creates a spiral pattern if done repeatedly. You'll need to make sure you're placing each quad in a way that continues the spiral in the same direction. If you orient a quad in the wrong direction, this will change the direction of your spiral. Watch out for that when you're building your balloon arch. This is a really easy mistake to make, especially if you use three or four different colors. After I secure a quad to the frame, I gently hold the frame with one hand and slide the center of the quad slightly towards the quad before it. 
Not too much, just slightly. I want the quads to be tightly packed together to hide the frame. If you push the quads too close together, this will actually create a larger gap and you don't want that. Check out what happened when I pushed the quad too far toward the quad before it. This created force between the two quads that separated a joint of the frame. This has happened to me before, so I knew how to fix it without damaging the balloons or laying the arch down. If you want to prevent this from happening, you can duct tape each joint before putting balloons on the frame to avoid this. This isn't completely necessary, but it can definitely help with avoiding this issue. Continue this method of adding quads until you fill up the entire arch frame. For my arch, I'll need 33 quads. Because there are two of each color for each quad, I'll need 66 blue balloons and 66 white balloons, 132 balloons total. To fill the balloon arch with balloons, it takes me a little over 20 minutes. But the entire build is going to take longer than that. Remember when I said you need extra supplies and take extra steps for an outdoor balloon arch build? In addition to securing the quads to the frame by twisting two balloons around the frame, you'll also need to include two more ways of securing your balloon arch. Here are the three ways you'll need to secure your balloon arch if it's going outdoors. The first way, which we've already done, is attaching the quads to the frame. The second way is to secure the quads to each other. And the third way is securing our frame to a structure. Sometimes I'll secure the frame to a structure before I add the balloons to the frame, but it really just depends. It wasn't very windy when I started building this balloon arch, so I figured I'd be able to get away with adding the balloons, then securing the frame to something structural afterwards. Securing the frame to something structural keeps the arch frame in place when unexpected gusts of wind come, and they will come so prepare for it. I've already attached my quads to the frame by twisting two balloons around the frame. Next, I'm going to secure my frame to something structural. Then after that, I'm going to attach the quads to each other. For securing my frame to a structure, I started by only attaching security lines to the sides of the balloon arch and to the fence nearby, but honestly, that doesn't really do much. It mainly prevents people at the event from moving the sides of the balloon arch. I need two security lines at the very top of the balloon arch secured in front and behind the balloon arch. Now that the top of the balloon arch is secured in both directions, now it's time for our third level of security, securing the quads to each other. This can be done by tying fishing line or balloon ribbon to the bottom quad and looping it around two balloons of the next quad and repeating until all the quads are looped around the quads next to them. This is important because if a balloon pops, the balloons around it are no longer snugly secure and are likely to untwist and blow off the frame. Before I learned about securing each quad to each other, this has happened to me. I returned to an event to find a completely bare frame with no balloons on it. They had all blown away because I hadn't secured them well enough on a very windy day. That was embarrassing. So avoid my mistake and make sure you're securing your outdoor balloon arch in all three of those ways I mentioned. Luckily, I didn't have any balloons pop during this build, so I'm going to deflate a balloon to show you how to repair popped balloons on a balloon arch. Follow the spiral of each color, and when you see a break in the spiral, you know that a color has popped or there is a deflated balloon in that spot. Inflate another balloon to the same same size that you've been inflating all your other ones and use my method for attaching two balloons together to quickly replace the balloon so that your spiral is back to its uninterrupted state. When I've completed securing the balloon arch and making all the repairs needed, I pack up my balloons and inflator, roll up my extension cord, and head out. In total, from the time that I parked to the time that I left the parking lot was right at an hour. This balloon arch was $300, so today I made $300 in one hour. For breaking down this event, I was scheduled to break down at a certain time, but it appears that there are still party goers around. In this case, I want to get the balloon arch away from the festivities and near a trash can. I untie the security lines that are securing this arch so I can begin moving the arch away from the event entrance. I'm able to pick up the arch at the bottom of the flexible rod, leaving the bases and water weights behind. Then I retrieve the bases and empty the water weights into a nearby storm drain or into grass or bushes. I systematically pop the balloons as quickly as possible. Once the balloons are popped, it's easy to separate and fold up the flexible rod and roll up my security lines. I sweep up the popped balloons and ribbon and toss them into a trash can. I take one last look around to see if I've missed anything, then head out. Let me know your thoughts on this balloon arch build in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more balloon and business content. That's a small way you can show your support for my channel. If you'd like to show your support in other ways, feel free to buy me a coffee. I always appreciate your support and encouragement in that way. Don't forget to subscribe to my weekly email newsletter. It's absolutely free and it sends my best content straight to your inbox. I also do free raffles and giveaways every once in a while, so you'll definitely not want to miss that. You can follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to. Good luck on your balloon arch build. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Joey. I'll see you next time.